So uh, remember, no one ever dies in Danganronpa, and we're here to oh, you're shitting me figure out who up. stole the uh, cookies from the cookie jar. It was shitting me. Aw, oh, hey, shitting me. <laughs> that is still oh, horrifying. That's fucking terrifying. All right, okay. <sighs> Thanks, shitting me. He wants me. to give you something. <laughs> a pile of shit. That's all. I mean, two so tissues gave us a lot of money. Yeah, that's still terrible. Goodbye. Oh, me. I leveled up from that apparently. Go stink up the world, baby. I have a lot of stuff for this bookmarked, but I can't find that one. So, woo. Huh? Are you kidding me? Hey, what the heck is that mountain? When did that get there? Never mind that. How do they even make a mountain shaped like Monokuma? Story. That story might be true after all. There might be an enormous organization involved in all this. You mean what Byakuya said before, right? Yeah, before he fucking died. No one dies in Danganronpa. Byakuya, we still need his knowledge. I can't believe he's dead. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh... What happened to Gundam and Fuyuhiko? Um, and then now that you've mentioned it, it appears they aren't here yet. I got it! I know, they probably ran away. No way! Oh, hell nah. There's no way I'd let them escape, you know? Look, I dragged this one back over here. Don't fuck with me! I'm telling you, let me go! Hey! And now, if you keep acting violent, I might just eat you up. Hey! Hey, Fihiko, what were you doing all this time? Huh? Nothing, I wasn't really doing anything. I was just chilling in my room when I suddenly heard that fat bastard got killed. Who the fuck cares about that anyway? How can you say something so irresponsible? Do you understand? We've been doing our best to investigate this murder even though we don't want to, just to survive. Wait! My hero, that's enough. You too, Fuyuhiko. Dumbass. Um... I guess we're waiting on Gundam. What happened? I am right here. Remember this well, a main character arrives when he intends to. Do you notice anything? Did you notice anything yeah. working? Hmm? Something that wasn't here before, but it's here now. It... Oh. Huh? Seems you noticed it too. <laughs> he... I... If they did, then I'm right. Alright. Whatever. Um... I guess you got it back? That's so weird. That's crazy. Wonder how that happened. All right, now that everyone's all together, let's take the secret entrance to the trial field. Also, I realized, guys, welcome back to Let's Play Danganronpa 2. Goodbye, despair. Uh, little heads up to what's ev everything happened and all that. The computer was down for a while, so there was heavy delays, and as such, we may not be as fresh as we should be. I, uh, everything was kind of fried for a while, I couldn't actually record, so... It's been something like three weeks, I think? Is that right? I don't know, I thought it was two weeks. I think it's been three weeks. I'm gonna take my word for it and say fuck yes. Okay. Please, wait a second! What's this? My, my, money me. Just what are you doing here? Nobody asked for you. Hmm? Do you actually want to join in? Do you want to taste the, how powerless you are at the class trial? You're an even bigger masochist than I thought. Hey, well, I'm a big brother who dotes on his little sister. I shall allow your special participation. See ya later. I'll go on ahead and wait for you guys, so hurry over. Huh? He told us to come, but how do we get there? I don't see any doors or vehicles. What's going on? He mentioned something about a secret entrance, was it? A secret entrance? 
Secret entrance! Secret entrance! I don't give a flying fuck if that fat pig is dead. Who fucking cares? Seriously. Ibuki, please. Calm by himself. Well? In RPG video games, it is common for secret areas to be underground. Comparing our situation to a video game, yeah, man, that's crazy. One point, <laughs> considering the game does that at the very beginning of the game. Jeez, yeah. how bored. Whatever, let's go inside already. Um. Be happy. You humans have been spared. I don't know why, but <laughs> hearing him say "be happy" like that is just wild. I'm just like, don't worry, be happy now. Alright, that's enough for that. Roar. What the? Is something shaking? Yes. Oh. Th th this is dangerous, everyone! Please get down! I don't really think... Monami, how do you not know what's going on, buddy? Tongue? S something came out! No way. Could it be? Is he telling us to enter it? What? Such a suspicious aura. Even Crimson Steel Oaf and Mega Z is trembling with fear. Wow, that's like so totally suspicious. Forgive me, seriously, just forgive me already! I mean, hey, why don't we just stop here? I mean, none of this is real anyway. Like, not even remotely. There's no way, there's no way we'll just find the killer. Stupid! Complaining won't get us anywhere. If you're really a man, then man up for God's sake. We've come this far. We have no choice but to keep moving forward. You're right. There's no one. There's nowhere for us to run. We need to do it. If that's everyone's decision, I'll just follow you guys. Yep. If this were a video game, it'd have a very high difficulty level. Let's do our best to clear the game. Actually, this is normal. Sounds all right. Shaking with fear and nervousness, I hesitantly lift my feet and step on. Uh, stepped onto the escalator. Also. This is not very well hidden. Like, I would imagine he would be like, Haha, if you guys want a chance to survive, you have to do this thing, but... No, he's just like, oh hey, spits out an escalator. Not to mention, how do you spit out an escalator? I won't think anymore. I, if I think, I'll run away. All I could do was stare upward at the escalator that carried me. Ooh. And when each of us entered Monokuma Rock... Descend. The rock is... Okay. This is a very familiar elevator. That's wild. This is an elevator. <laughs> I see this entire rock's an elevator. Damn, you are really just so observant to realize that this is an elevator. Once again, Monokum is doing as he pleases. However, however, if he's gone this far and made something like this, I don't think he's playing around. Even so, we're going pretty deep. You're right. I heard an unnerving chattering inside my head. Soon as I realized it's in my teeth. <laughs> All I could do was purse my lips tightly so everyone else couldn't hear it. Everyone starts making fun of Hajime for chattering his teeth. There we were, listening to the unpleasant roars of the elevator plunged deeper and deeper into the earth. I feel like it's a bad idea to try to dig under an island, but you know, whatever, sure. Some time passed before the elevator finally finished descending, and then the elevator's door slowly opened. And we woke up and it was 20 years later. Welcome! 
Okay, welcome! This is the class trial field, how do you like it? It's a special place that will decide your fates. Are you... What the hell is he thinking, locking us in a shitty looking place like this? Don't fuck with me! You fucking crazy, don't mess with me, asshole! <laughs> Complain how you like, I'm used to it by now. Hey, come on, you're wasting your time and energy. Hurry up and take your seats with your names where your names are written. It looks like everyone knows, even if we try to resist, it won't change a thing. Just as Monokuma ordered, we walked towards the seats where we had been assigned. From this point on, we need to find out who killed Byakia. The ultimate affluent progeny, Byakia Togemi. He was overly critical, arrogant, and condescending, but he also had a strong sense of responsibility. As we were panicking, he accepted his role as leader and tried his very best to keep us together. A guy like him got murdered. The person who did it is one of us? I can't believe it. There's no way I can believe it. But if it's actually true... We need to find out by any means possible. Because that's our only option. There's no way for us to survive unless we sacrifice the killer. And so, this life-threatening trial building with hope and despair has begun. Menacing focus. Greatly increases focus gauge. Effective during the class trial. Cannot be combined with extraordinary focus. And that's it. Uh, we'll actually go back. Hmm? Go back. Go to open the handbook. Go to report cards. Go to my bitch, Monomi, or below you. You can buy them from her right now. Oh. Uh, what should we do then? I don't know. Just scroll through them and like read what they do. Because you have 19, so you have quite a bit. Slightly increases influence gauge. Effective during the class trial. Cannot be combined with an envious influence. So increase. This cannot be with menacing focus, which it is. This is what we have, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. We have menacing Slight focus. Slight increases though. the. Yeah, that's what I mean. Slight increases the time limit for each phase, effective during the class trial. Influence gauge recovery when correct answers are chosen. Go, um, go down to Amidextrous and Vocabulary. Increases bolt capacity, allows you to walk onto two statements at once. Okay. I think I would pick this one. That's during the panic this. talk action, so yeah. That would be pretty good, I guess. I remember we wanted that one in the first one, but I don't remember yeah. who gave it. Easier shift mood to your favor. Curses sharpness by two. No idea what that means. Remember how in the rebuttal showdown you have the sword and you're slashing? I think that increases sharpness means it would take less hits to destroy a statement. I think one of the influences would be good to have to just increase the influence gauge. Or the one that made it so that it recovered faster. That one. I'm down for that. Alright, time to set my skills. I have a lot of skill points. Flint's gauge recovery. Focus gauge decreases at a slower rate. Allows you to walk onto two statements at once. Yeah. Alright. We are good to go. Mm -hmm. Did you see that one that allows you to jump higher? What? No, I it's did not It's not in that, that list, one. but it's in the other list. Yeah, you'll see. I'm curious. You'll see. The blue human vacation is now crimson red. If the kill really one of us, or is it someone else? Class trial starts now. Now to John with the weather. Okay. 
Okay. I don't know why, but that little scroll along at the bottom then, just reminds let's me of begin with a simple the explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, uh, and that person will earn uh, the right to leave what? this island. Why is Monami hanging from the ceiling? I think to make sure Such she can't interfere. Girl. Before we begin, I'd like to confirm one thing. Is there really a killer among us? Most definitely! There's no doubt that the blackened is lurking among you! Such a sad state of affairs, Oof. isn't it? By the way, this class trial is gonna be 100% fair, so there's no need to worry! Unlike one of the ones from the previous game. Which one? I'm the type who hates favoritism and prejudice. Because there was, you think? Well, there were a few that Monokuma, of like, interfered in. Yeah, but there was one that was 100% not fair. I mean, yeah, because it was meant to kill someone who did not commit a crime. Mm -hmm. But also, she pulled an owie. Now, let's begin! Y you're telling us to begin, but what are we supposed to do? No complaining, let's just settle this with our fists! Were you even listening to the rules? Didn't that Byakuya bastard get killed in the dining hall, huh? Then everyone there is a fucking suspect. Yeah, yeah, what you're really trying to say is that you're not the killer, right? No shit. You guys went off on your own and started killing each other. This has nothing to do with me. Huh? What does that mean? Anyway, why don't we try talking about the most pressing issue on our minds? Huh. The most pressing issue on our minds? Where we found the body. It's very strange to find a body underneath the table. Then... Let's start with that mystery. The reason why Biaka's body was discovered in the dining hall table. We can start with that, but unfortunately, but ultimately, we need to find out who murdered him. If we can't do that... No, thinking about if is a waste of time. We have to do this no matter what. So the class trial has finally started. From this point on, we'll fight a simple tutorials at every important moment. I'm sorry, but please excuse my irritating rudeness. As things progress during each class trial, you engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, all your classmates will speak one after another without any breaks. It's up to you to reveal any lies or mistakes contained within their statements. This means you'll have to use truth bullets to refute what they say. One of the, out of all the truth bullets you find during your investigation, only the relevant ones will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the left stick to move the reticle, then fire with the some button that it doesn't tell me. <laughs> Pay close attention to each character's statements. Choose the truth bullets to blast the right ones. And note that if you run out of time, you'll automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the start button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Make your argument. Knife. Oh. What's the end of the table? Gaps in the floorboard. Why was Byakuya's body in a place like that? His body was underneath the table at the very back of the dining hall. After the killer murdered Byakuya, they probably moved the body there. Huh? Why? Obviously by hiding the body, they tried to delay its discovery! Like a dog burying a bone! Yeah, no, huh? What he just said was strange. It clearly contradicts the information I know. Why was Biak in a place like his body was under at the very back of the dining hall? After the killer murdered Biak, they probably moved. Oh, wrong one. Apparently it's X. No, that's wrong. No. Got that wrong. I don't think the killer moved the body. Huh? Why? Try to remember what the body looked like when we found it under the tape. Though there was a lot of blood everywhere, there was no sign the killer actually dragged the body through. So that's why you think it's impossible that the killer moved the body. I see. I get your point. Aww. And here I thought I had a genius idea. It didn't make any sense to begin with. That would require us all not to notice him drawing, dragging a freaking body. Too bad you're 
you're so yeah. stupid and boring and unpopular. Your life is meaningless. God, I hate her. I respond better to praise, you know. But if the killer didn't move the body, why was it under the table? Yakuya was probably killed under the table. What? You think he was killed under the table? That's what he just said, yeah. So Byakuya snuck under the table for reasons unknown. And that's when he was killed. Then, shortly thereafter, we found his body under the table. Th that does make sense, but why did he go under the table? Obviously, he was hiding so he could surprise us. That dude was always a big jokester. Okay, Connor. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you know Byakuya Togami? couldn't tell what kind of person he was? Hmm. Maybe he panicked during the blackout and dove under the table. It's a blackout, not an earthquake. And just because the power went out doesn't mean he'd dive under the table. The reason why is probably connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, don't you think? The reason Byakuya dove under the table. If it's connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, then it's probably... Yes, I love my wife. Would it be this one? Okay, I'm just gonna guess that it is the Dear Woman case, because I'm not immediately seeing anything. Oh, it has the wrong buttons listed, that's why. Crap. During the party. Oh, it's... Go up to the top. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the knife. Why? I'm pretty sure. Th this has nothing to do with what he was doing during the party. Well, it's why he went under the table. I can prove it with this. It probably has something to do with the knife we found under the table. Knife? Oh, you mean that thing that obviously screams, I am the murder weapon! Y yes, that is what a knife is. Byakuya probably noticed the knife was hidden there. So in order to get it, he moved under the table. He was particularly sensitive to the presence of dangerous items, so I cannot deny that possibility. But how did he notice that there was a knife under the table? If he knew beforehand, he probably would have done something about it before the blackout, right? Then, instead of knowing about it beforehand, maybe he saw it right at that moment. Like, for example, he might have seen someone trying to take the knife out from under the table. No, that's not possible. What? You seem rather confident about that. You weren't even there. Of course. Yeah. I have proof to back me up. <laughs> this is almost like a real trial! During the previous statement, there was only one weak spot, but from this point on, there will be various weak spots standing in your way. No matter how many weak spots there are, there will only be one wire contradiction in the debate at a time. This means that there will be a false weak spots. If you shoot a false weak spot with a truth bullet, not only will you fail to refute what was said, but you'll also lower your trust with everyone, and your influence gauge will take damage. If your influence gauge reaches zero, you will fail, so please be extra careful. You'll have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or mistakes. Also, if you're concentrated by holding down the RB button, you can progress the argument slowly. Please use it whenever you feel like the statements are moving too fast for you to aim. However, this does consume the focus gauge, so please be careful. If you press the start button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Knife, what's in the table, caps on the floorboard, AC timer, night vision goggles, and... Alright. I'm sure Byakuya ducked under the table during the blackout. That sounds correct. If that's the case, during the blackout, Mr. Ham Ham must have seen the killer take the knife. But it was super pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my boot. Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. I doubt he could have seen the killer. Yeah, I'm correct. 
I'm sure Byakuya during the black. That sounds correct. If that's the case, during the blackout, I must have seen the kill. But it was super. It was so dark I could Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. You got that wrong. No, that's wrong. No, Byakuya was probably the only one who was able to see in the dark. Why do you say that? He was using those night vision goggles we found under the table. He could have seen what was happening. So, are you saying Byakuya was the one who used those night vision goggles? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Your reasoning is out of focus. Oh, people can slash no, mine? That's obviously wrong. It should be the other way around. Another way around? Seriously? This is a rebuttal the showdown. Used those night vision goggles, not Byakuya. Were you surprised by Hiryu's sudden argument? Just between you and me, I was also surprised. Just kidding. I'm Gotta sorry. Be real with you now then, I explained this earlier because I, for some reason, thought you already knew about it. But my bad. No. Now then, when this kind of argument surfaces, you will go into a one-on-one -on -one debate called rebuttal showdown. In this mode, you have to counter the other person's claim, draw out their weak spots, and argue against them. Please counter the other person's remarks with the left stick. Based on the shape of their remarks, it's important to know whether to cut vertically or sideways or diagonally. And based on what? And based on that, you can skew the debate's mood to your advantage. I heard you talking about cutting, and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm gonna leave it. Yeah. I don't know why you would think I would know anything about this. Because I forgot that we, in my brain, we already have through this trial, so I don't know. Yeah. On the other hand, if you ignore the other person's remarks, it will skew towards their advantage. In the bottom right hand corner of your screen, a number shows the sharpness of your counters displayed. This is the number of times you can cut remarks during one round of the debate. You will lose counts of your sharpness even if you miss, so please be very careful. When the mood, mood skews to your advantage for a certain length of time, the other party's argument changes. This means the conversation will develop. If that happens, they will end up divulging some weak spots. However, you cannot normally cut remarks that contain weak spots. Instead, it would skew the mood toward the other party's advantage. Plus, it's going to be very... big. What? Just like a regular debate, please refute any weak spots with the Y button. Of course, if you don't have the correct truth bullets, you will not be able to cut an opponent's remark. Huh? What's a truth point? A truth point, apparently. I'm terribly sorry, it appears there has been a delay in contacting you. I will make sure the person in charge of contact takes a very long vacation. In this mode, truth bullets will be called truth blades. Um, that's about it. There won't be any other changes to your handbook menu. Only the name was changed, but don't you think a change in feeling is important? To change the... yeah, okay. Well then, good luck and have fun. If you just use common sense... The killer obviously used those night vision goggles, that's gotta be it! I can't back down! Spam! Throw it game. Oh, he failed it. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. If you just use the killer obviously use those night vision, that's gotta be it. Where's your proof that the killer used them? Because if they use night vision, then they could have killed Byakuya even in the dark. I mean, in reality, so those goggles were planted that the killer brought them to the crime scene. Oh, I cut that one. Because if they used my then they could've killed Byakuya even I mean, in reality. So those goblins were planned and if the killer brought them to the crime scene. Okay. Figure out how to do this. even in the team in reality. So those goblins were planned and if the killer brought them to the crime scene. Hey. I was trying You keep regularly okay. cutting the thing. No, uh, I accidentally hit A, and apparently A also cuts, not just the left stick. Because if they use night, then they could have killed Byakuya even in the dark. I mean, in reality. So those goggles were planned if the killer brought them to the crime scene. Allow me to cut through those words. Allow me to cut through those words. <laughs> Hell yeah, Haji. Okay. Byakuya was definitely the one who brought those night vision goggles. Definitely? Inside the Duralumin case Byakuya had with him during the party, we found a smaller case for storing the night vision goggles. Which means we can assume that the night vision goggles were kept inside that Duralumin case as well. Yes, Ibuki. I said assume. Ibuki never uses such clever language. Okay, Ibuki. 
I. Okay. Yakuya was the only one who could have taken the night vision goggles out of the case. Since he was carrying it around before the blackout in the first place. I see. When you put it like that, it makes sense. Then, was that knife inside the case too? If there were night vision goggles inside, it wouldn't be weird for a knife to be in there too. It would be weird. I am weird, aren't I? At times like this, I'd rather be fantasizing about tonight's main dish. Pussy! <sighs> you totally mean that in a perverted way! We know that. We're ignoring it. The knife was brought in the dorm case alongside the night vision goggles, too. No, that's not possible. The knife was hidden in the dining hall before the party even started. It should be able to prove it. With the duct tape? I see! There was duct tape left under the table where the body was found. Huh? Duct tape? They probably hit the knife by duct taping it to the underside of the table. Oh, so that's why we found duct tape there. Whatever you say, Dachi. Though Byakuya was thorough, even he couldn't have noticed a weapon taped to the underside of the table. This may be off topic, but why was Byakuya acting so paranoid? Not only did he bring a self-defense kit, but he had night vision goggles inside the case too. That's true. He went above and beyond being a little cautious. Now that you mention it, that applies to the dangerous items he confiscated as well. It's one thing to be a little cautious, but performing a body check is a bit much. He probably knew someone was planning to commit a murder. Are you saying he predicted the murder? Could it be? Was he also in possession of the all-seeing eye? You think so too, right, Hajime? That's right, Pyakia probably knew there was a possibility that murder would occur. Because, you know... A threatening letter those fans inside Byaka's room. Be careful. The first one, the first killing would happen tonight. Someone would definitely kill someone. Wait, the first kill will happen tonight? I didn't even read that. It's dumb. I can prove it with this. Everyone, can you please take a look at this? Yeah, I, I can't do this anymore. It's just Dachi. No, it's, it's Hajime Hinata. <sighs> Fuck off with your it's just a head bullshit. <laughs> No. Oh. It like I didn't notice it until I got into the trial and he actually started talking for once and I'm like, oh my god, it's just a dachi. Be careful, the first kill happened tonight, someone will definitely kill someone. Hey, what the hell is this? Hajime and I found this in Byakuya's cottage. It looks like a threatening letter someone sent for. So who's the someone? Nobody besides Monokuma would write such a dumb threatening letter like that. Wasn't me! Are you sure? The only lies I tell are friendly lies! At Cheston. Those are still lies! Doesn't matter who wrote it yet. So, Yakuya became paranoid because of this threatening letter? He probably decided to throw a party because of the letter. What do you mean? By gathering everyone in one place, he tried to create a situation where everyone could keep tabs on each other. In doing so, he tried to put the writer of the letter in a situation where he couldn't act. But the letter might have been just a little prank. As long as he was determined not to let any of us die, he couldn't take that risk. His strong sense of responsibility made him believe the letter was legitimate. He should have told us he received a threatening letter. If he had, we would have panicked. Yakuya probably knew that too. So, he tried to do something about it without telling anyone? I see. A strong sense of responsibility as our leader is his idea. Screw that noise! Who the hell wrote that letter? Well, obviously, the killer. The killer? No one thought of that before. Is it really one of us? Who is it? Among us, who's the one who killed Byakia? Enough already! Show yourself, you coward! If they were willing to come forward, they never would have committed a murder in the first place! But I still can't believe it. Someone in this room killed Byakia. There's no way I can believe that yet. Um, pardon me. Can I say something, please? What is it, Miss Sonia? I regret that I must return to this topic, but... 
I just realized something concerning the night vision goggles. If Byakuya was indeed wearing those goggles, how did the killer manage to navigate in the dark? You're right. They wouldn't have been able to see anything without the night vision goggles. But if the murderer had the goggles when they took the knife, then how did Byakuya see them? Even if the knife bore some sort of mark, it would have been difficult to see it in that darkness. Now the killer definitely used a mark, and because of that mark, the killer was able to get the knife from under the table. Glowing paint. I see. What if the glowing paint was the mark? With that, you'd be able to get the knife even in the dark. In actuality, the knife we found under the table, and the duct tape stuck to the underside of the table were both marked with glowing paint, right? Does that mean the killer painted them in advance? The painting them with glowing paint? It's as if they knew the blackout was going to happen. They had to have already known. That's why they used the glowing paint as a mark. Which means whoever set up the blackout is the killer. That seals it. The killer is whoever was in the office with the circuit breaker. Mm. Which means it was you, Peko Pekoyama. We've he was there when we proved that we couldn't reach it, right? Yes. <sighs> Soda, listen. I think you're interesting. You're definitely not smart. Peko killed poor Byakuya? Was this island not big enough for two glasses wearers? She's also really interesting, but really dumb. Oh, I guess she's not. You're not even that interesting, you're just dumb. How can you believe her so easily? But with Peko's height, I don't think she's able to reach the circuit breaker in the office. I don't care about a technicality like that. Peko's the one who tricked the breaker and caused the blackout. By tricking the breaker directly from the office, Peko was the one who caused the blackout. Is that really what happened? No. After this, blue-colored weak spots will start appearing. If we call it weak spots you've seen until now are your spots, the blue-colored weak spots are called agree spots. When shooting a grease spot with true bullets, you need to flip your way of thinking. Instead of arguing that one person's testimony contains lies or mistakes, please fire truth bullets that prove the other person's testimony is correct. Okay. Now we cool. get to agree We're with people. Doing Yay. That. When your truth bullets merge with their weakness, it will become a logically sound agreement. Isn't it a little hot in here? From now on, you must infer whether it's best to argue or agree, based on what's debated. Mm. Freaking pickers. Well then, good luck and have fun. Oh, I don't remember any of these. Since Pe Give me a second. Nekamaru. Nekamaru kept trying to use the bathroom since before, that's probably not important. Kazuichi, during the, uh, he didn't see anyone there, Kuni Peko, probably not important. So, Chiaki. When Chucky found it was staring at a guard, so could be a kind of So what's the question we're trying to answer again? I don't know yet. Okay, so it's probably Kazuichi's account. She could have caused the blackout at any time! That's impossible. Huh? Why is it impossible? Because I was not in the office. Not even before the blackout. What happened to your guard duty? Sorry. Oh, you weren't in the office? That's clearly a desperate excuse. Since Pekka was in, she could have caused the blackout. What you thinking? Huh? Why is it? Because I was not. I'm thinking it's Teru Teru on this one. No. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna read the testimonies again, but oh, it would be Nakamura then because the bathroom. Shiaki was standing guard outside Fuki apparently. Yeah, I guess it would be Nakamura then. I'm guessing that implies she was in the bathroom the entire time. She could have caused the blackout at any time. That's impossible. Huh? Because I was not in the not even before the blackout. I agree with that. You got that right. No, I think Pekka was telling the truth. 
Mm, don't tell me you're crushing on Peko. I'm not you, Soda. It's nothing like that at all. Nikomaru's account is actually Peko's alibi. It's true. Someone was occupying the bathroom for a long time shortly after the party started. And it was finally freed up after Byakuya's body was discovered. Uh, then the person who was in the bathroom that whole time was actually... Everyone else besides Pekka was in the dining hall after the party started, right? I see. So there's no way anybody else could have locked themselves in the bathroom except Pekka. I... I guess that would be... true. You locked yourself in the commode? You should have said so earlier! There's no way she'd actually say that. Gosh, you are so insensitive! If she locked herself in the bathroom for that long, there's no doubt. It's shit. Listen, he's a very interesting character, but God, if all he thinks about is shit. <laughs> oh, there's no way she'd admit it. There's no way she'd admit she was taking a shit. Hey, were you guys taught any basic manners, or were you raised in a locker room? No, I'm sorry. It's fine. How about we stop talking about this and move on to something else? Don't worry, the smell wasn't that strong. I use the bathroom right after you, so you can trust me. <sighs> I said it's fine. But still, you were in the bathroom for a really long time. Did you get food poisoning or something? As soon as I stepped into the office, I felt this sudden rush of pain in my stomach. Because of that, I was unable to leave the bathroom, including when the blackout occurred. Hey. How did it feel to do your business in the dark? Did you get excited? Seriously, stop it. But still, your stomach pain. Was that really just a coincidence? Hey, what's the deal? Don't butt into other people's business, especially what? if you didn't do any investigating. <laughs> I'm only butting in because you fucking idiots are out of your element. Stop this childish nonsense. Just what do you mean by coincidence? What I mean is, is it possible someone slipped her some laxatives? Laxatives? If so, the killer could have tripped the breaker as soon as that girl left the office, don't you think? I see. That might have happened. The question is whether Pekka's stomach ache was a coincidence or if someone intentionally caused it. So what do you think? Depending on the answer, the outcome of this trial could change drastically. I think that somebody poisoned the food, considering there were multiple people who suddenly needed to use the bathroom terribly. No. The only one who wasn't was the monster no. over there. There were not multiple people that needed to hmm? use the bathroom terribly. Did you Nekamaru always it was Paco and Neko. does. Oh, okay. And we know someone else who ate the food and did not have to go to the now bathroom. That you mention it. Well, yeah, but she's a monster. <laughs> Stupid people don't get sick. No, Just but okay. From the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? Taro Taro cooked the food, how suspicious! I, I wouldn't do anything like that! Laxatives would ruin the taste! Okay. Did you eat anything weird? I don't remember eating anything weird. Now that you met, you brought food to the off just a little bit from- There might have been some lax- Taro Taro cooked the food! I, I wouldn't do anything like- Laxatives would ruin the taste! No. Crap. Did you eat anything weird? Person pose. Yeah, you know. I don't remember eating anything weird. Okay. What was it? How would the embarrassing pose help? Goggles wouldn't help. I'm not. Now that you mention it. It has to be party dishes because none of those other things seem to have anything to do with it. So I guess I just chose the wrong one. What? What? You're missing. Technically. I wouldn't do anything like that. The plus was directly on it. Did you eat anything? I don't remember eating it. Now that you mention it, you brought food to the office, right? Just a little bit from the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? No, that's wrong! 
I don't see how it's wrong, based on exactly what he said. I guess we're inferring oh, something. It's impossible that laxatives were slipped into the food in the dining hall. Because Pekka wasn't the only one who ate that food. The Kane ate some of it too. If the food had laxatives in it, I'm pretty sure Akane would have had stomach issues as well. I feel totally fine. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I don't believe anything about Akane. I think she's a monster. She's a normal person. Don't go making weird accusations. I mean, she's not a normal person. None of these people are normal people. They're all ultimates. I apologize for causing a scene. Fuyuhiko should apologize, not you. He's the one who made the laxative accusation. Did they drink anything was the question. What the fuck did you say, bitch? Is this bickering? Let's just dismiss Pekko's stomachache as a coincidence and go back to discussing the blackout. Yeah, yeah. We already know that, you trashy skank. You don't have to tell us. Can I kill her? No. Would anyone care? No. Because it doesn't matter what happens after the first killing, right? Like, I could just stab her right now and I would be an accomplice. As long as the murder happened during the blackout, then the blackout itself is actually what's important. So we need to make it clear how the blackout has occurred. Has occurred. Really Monokuma's By the way, I'm not a trashy skank. I love you, hon. Aww. Poor me, Khan. I'm glad I actually sat through it all rather than choosing the Let's correct one. If you can't answer that, did they throw us? Maybe they used a remote. Two, three, it does not have to be. They may have tampered with the powers, or maybe they caused a power surge. You got that right! It's just as Mayu said. The blackout was caused by a power surge. Of course, that's not a coincidence. Someone caused it intentionally. Which is why those three irons were arranged to cause the blackout. When you found them right after the blackout, the irons were still on, right? So by leaving those irons on in the storage room, they deliberately caused a power surge. Yeah, it seems that's how the killer caused the blackout. Stupid fool! What? Hold on a second, let me speak too! What the heck? You say the irons in the storage room were used to trigger the blackout? That's inexcusable! What? If the irons in the storage room caused the blackout, then for the killer to turn the irons on, you're saying they went all the way to the storage room? Then that means everyone who went when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect. No, just because people were in the dining hall doesn't mean they're not a suspect. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to. The irons caused them, and the killer had to go to the store okay. and turn on the iron. Forget so that's not A. Why? What you said. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to. Keep. The irons caused the blackout. Allow me we got to that wrong. Those words. Irons are just one reason the blackout occurred, but they weren't the direct trigger. The direct trigger was when the air conditioners in the dining hall and office clicked on. The air conditioners! The timers for both air conditioners were set to 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m.? Mr. Ham Ham's died around that time, too! I see. When the timers activated the air conditioners, the breaker was tripped and caused a blackout. I see! I understand! Indubitably! Never. Never again. Indubitably? They probably checked the old building's energy usage in advance, and used the irons to nearly max it out. So once they set the air conditioner's timers, they just had to wait until they started up on their own. If so, even if Pekka was in the office, it still would have been possible to cause a blackout Indubitably. Indubitably? Miss Sonia, not you too. 
Regarding the energy usage, they probably asked Monokuma about it. Dun dun dun! Is she right? Such a hateful fear! You deserve to die a thousand deaths! A thousand, you say? If I died that many times, I might really stay dead, you know? Shut up! You guys just stay quiet! I couldn't have prevented the blackout even if I was in the office. Even so, I feel regret. If I was in the office, I could have reset the breaker in time. And maybe the murder wouldn't have occurred. No. The breaker in the office was built into a high area of the wall that's impossible to reach. Resetting the breaker in that darkness would have been impossible, no matter what. Sounds like you don't need to blame yourself. Even so, the killer is so sly. I'm starting to worry we may never actually find them. It's all right. You don't have to worry. Because they're just a petty killer, right? They can't defeat symbols of hope like you guys. I don't like him. I really don't like him. Yeah, you do. No, I really don't like him. He's just... He is Naegi, but with a slight undertone that is just evil. He's just but evil he's, Naegi. We did like him. We hung out and everything. Yeah, he's he's interesting, entertaining, but really, I just think he's evil. There's huh? no way everybody will lose now. This little incident will just be a stepping stone for you all. In the end, hope always wins. That's what I believe. Uh, Nagito? What happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have been saying this whole time that there's no way a killer could be among us. Oh, is that so? Well, let's just put that minor detail aside for now and talk about the incident. For now, we found out how the blackout occurred. But the question is, who caused it, right? Anybody could have hid and set the timers for the air conditioners. Setting up the irons in the storage room could have been done before Byakuya set foot in the old building. What a shame. Any one of us is capable of that. What are you implying? He's just saying, after all this time, we still haven't made any progress. Huh? Even though we have been arguing for so long? Fortunately, this is the truth. Despite the fact that we've discussed this at length, there's not even one clue that leads to the killer. But that might be because there's no way any of us could be a killer. Y you're changing your story again? Anyway, I have an idea about what we all should do at this point. Has anyone thought about our situation like this? Instead of surviving by doubting others, is yeah. it better to get killed for believing in others? Doesn't that mean... Are you saying we should all just give up and die? Nagito, there's definitely something wrong with you. <laughs> you guys only think there's something wrong with me because there's something wrong with you. Suspecting each other like this. There's no way that's healthy behavior. Let's stop this already. We don't have to find out who the killer is. I can't stand this anymore. I don't want to do this to my friends. I... I don't want to do this either. They're just taking Naegi and trying to use his positive things to make us all lose. Me too! Please, take me home already! Ah, I want to go home and eat candy! Stop it. If everyone acts like this, I... I'm gonna... Everyone calm down. We're all friends, aren't we? There's no way one friend would murder another. Then why did Byakuya die? Who cares? Let's just give up already. There are no clues that lead to the killer anyway. Not a single one. You got that wrong! wrong. <laughs> I think... Did you say something? Guys, we've already found a clue that might point to who the killer is. You know who the killer is? The killer? I don't know. But we do have a clue about a suspicious person. I think. I still love that hoodie. I see. Then care to tell me, what's this clue you're talking about? 
First of all, let's try thinking about how the killer was able to obtain the knife during the blackout. Didn't we already cover that? They use glowing paint as a mark. No, not that. I mean before that. Four? She asked me how the killer got close to that table. Even if they had to obtain the knife by relying on the globe from the paint, in order to do that, they needed to get close to the table while it was still dark. Let's try examining the situation. My hero's diagram might be useful here. The diagram of where everyone was standing before the blackout, right? Um, here it is! Hmm, Nagato is the closest. Interesting. Hmm? Just as I thought this diagram is the clue. It's either me or Nagito. Who the killer is and how they would have moved in the, to the table in the dark. That's clearly shown in this diagram. First we need to discuss how the killer was able to move to the table in the dark. The killer probably used something to help them move in the dark. Move in the dark? Yeah. I wasn't expecting to be doing this. Um, the duct tape was stuck to the other side of the table, but what you're saying the killer used to move in the dark? This makes no sense. Hey Gib, just scroll over a little bit to the right. Wait, you can move? Or maybe not, but you can still see it. There you go. Good job. What is that? It's the cord from the lamp. I must have used the desk lamp to move to that oh. table in the dark. Oh. I didn't even know what that was. I thought it was a line on the ground. Ah, oh, it's even in the or something. diagram. Yeah. There's no way the killer could have used the desk lamp. Of course, there's no way the desk lamp light. The killer actually used the power cord. I can prove it with this. Yeah, I didn't see it in the picture. Was the problem? They didn't turn the desk lamp on. They used its power cord. They could have felt their way to that table using the power cord, right? By doing that, the killer was able to move to the table and use the glowing paint to find the knife. And there's only one person here who could have done that. The only person here could have possibly done it. Was Piyaki, obviously. Was yes. the shithead. He's not a shithead. You're the only one. <laughs> you, wasn't it? Me? Judging from everyone's positions before the blackout, the only person near the power cord was you. Which means the only one who could have felt their way to the table using the power cord was Nagito. This is making a lot of assumptions, to be honest. It's not that hard to figure out your position before something happens and then just move three feet over, crouch down, just go against the floor. Or even the guy who was just south of Nagito just going against the wall, getting the power cord and falling under. But I agree, it is Nagito. That's just a coincidence. But still, you had a chance, right? A chance to hide the knife under the table? Nagito's chance to hide the knife under the table was when he was cleaning. I see. Nagito, weren't you cleaning the dining hall all morning? If so, you would have had a chance to hide the knife. That's. You factor in the power cord and the time you spent cleaning. You're the only one who could have done it. Seriously, that's all just a coincidence. If it was just one coincidence, it'd be fine. But when it's one right after another, I wonder, is something about that even possible? Could it be? Did you give yourself cleaning duty on purpose so you could hide the knife under the table? Now that you mention it, Nagito did prepare the drawing to pick who cleaned the dining hall. Yeah. Yep. You rigged the drawing, didn't you? That's how you got picked to clean the dining hall, isn't it? Ultimate lucky student, huh? I don't know if you're the killer or not, but regardless, it 
<laughs> nah, he's just regular old Nagito. That was part of your plan. Yeah. You got us to lower our guard and tried to hide the fact that you did it, didn't you, you motherfucker? Well, just admit it. I love that small child. <laughs> Unlike the other small child who's terrible. Nagito, tell me you object to this. Frankly, I don't want to believe it either. We investigated together. You were so kind. I can't believe you're the one who killed Byakuya. <laughs> Nagito, say something. I'm giving up on you. <laughs> nah, regular old Nagito. He needs some eye drops though, buddy. Yeah. Like I said, a twisted sense of hope. Those eyes. Ugh. At that moment, Nagu's eyes, the darkness in his eyes shone brightly as if layers upon layers of darkness were folding into one another. As if hope and despair had been cruelly mixed together. Let's cut to the chase. You're correct. It was my doing all along. I'm the one who hid the knife under the table before the party started. I'm the one who used the power cord to find my way to the table in the dark. And of course, I'm the one who caused the blackout. After all, there's no way I'd knowingly whip out a knife in front of everyone, right? Uh, is it just me, or... Does he seem a little nuts right now? But I never expected Yaku to have night vision goggles. Because of that, we had ourselves a little scuffle under the table. And, well, we all saw how that played out. With a twist ending like this, I think we can all agree this ended up being a very interesting mystery. <laughs> Yakuya performed admirably. Just stop it already! Seriously! What the hell happened to you? So, uh, not shocking anything, but this is why you have to hang out with Nagito in the very beginning, or else you can't hang out with him for the rest of the game. So, you're welcome. Yep. Oh, so is that what you were talking about when I overheard yes, you in the background? It was after this point, you okay. can't hang out with him anymore. Okay. So, to clarify for the audience's sake, I, uh, Cassie Whoops. over here, the big dum dum who left the recording going on her side for three and a half hours after Whoops. we had stopped because she failed to hit the end button, yeah, the know. stop button. Mistakes. So I'm literally just skimming through trying to cut it all out, and I click on a random spot, and I just hear her in the background, very faintly off in the distance, talking to her boyfriend, saying, "Yeah, I can't hang out with." And I immediately hit stop. I went, "Okay." Skim back further, found the uh, stop, and I just cut everything else out. I went, I don't know who can't I can't hang out with, but I'm not doing this. I'm not. Yeah, I told Cal when I found out that you heard that. I was like, "Eh, it's fine. He'll find out who I was talking about soon enough." <laughs> well, I figured it out beforehand because you know, I thought it was obvious. Lie? That's outrageous. There's no he would never lie to us. Yeah. He seems like the sort of person whose eyes light up while watching Friday the 13th. Just like me. <laughs> Love you, Sonia. That's quite the hobby you have there. But, like, now's not really the time to bring it up. This guy, is he... Is he the real Nagito? Hey, Nagito. If you were behind all of this, then did you also send that threatening letter? No. Nope. Yep, I sure did. There's nobody else on this island whose handwriting is that 
painful to look at, right? Okay, well, I didn't expect him to actually have done it. Also, what do you mean, painful to look at? It's definitely weird, but, like, more so just looks like he has an issue with steadying his hand, so he has to draw straight lines. Which is kind of a mood. But why would you send a threatening letter in the first place? I think somewhere deep in my heart, I was probably hoping to find someone who would stop my evil deeds. Well, I bet if that really was my reason, at least some of you would feel sorry for me. Are you making fun of us? By threatening Yakuya, Nagito was likely able to manipulate his actions. It's pretty uncool of you, Nagi. Mm -hmm. In doing so, Nagito was able to manipulate everyone to the scene where the murder would occur. Am I wrong? That reminds me. Nagito was the one who suggested I guard the office. Suggestions. It was all a trap to manipulate us. Yep, that's true too. But you're wrong about one thing. Uh, huh? What? I didn't need to rig the drawing for cleaning duty, you know. Ultimate lucky if student. That's true, then how did you conveniently get picked? Yeah, Nagito's duty? luck is very different from well, Nagi's luck. No way I'd Nagi's luck remember. was basically just like a cover up. For being the ultimate hope. Checks and balances. Nagito's luck is... Yeah. We're going to make it so that you're always lucky. And, like, if you want to do something, it'll happen. But also, we're going to do it in some really fucked up ways. Because there are some other instances of how his luck affects him later. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, the thing about... The thing about Naegi is that his was all checks and balances. He was constantly having bad things happen to him that would help him in a good way. Nagito had good things happen to him that would fuck up everything around him. Because he is a demented son of a bitch. So, kind of like Monkey's Paw. Yeah. Naegi had bad things happen to him that would turn out good for him in the long run. Nagito just had good things happen that caused mischief and mayhem. Nagito's talent. I believe his talent is the ultimate transporter, just like in Talon's yes. talent. Uh, the ultimate, ultimate baby face. Is. Ultimate baby Last face. Let's see, he go. <laughs> You're the ultimate lucky student. Then, did you? That's right. I just trusted my luck. I trusted I'd be picked for cleaning duty. You just relied on your luck? It's not just luck. It's true my talent sucks, but I'm still the ultimate lucky student, you know? <laughs> yeah. At the time, Hajime said I wasn't lucky, but it was actually the opposite. I was lucky. That's why I got picked for cleaning duty, just like I wanted. Question, what would happen if a, uh, if an execution failed? What do you mean? Let's say you go to get executed and the execution just doesn't work. Monica would just come out and just slit your throat, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just find it really funny if they if they if Monica would just tries to execute him and it fails. It doesn't kill him. He just goes, "What?" and he just goes, "Oh. Well, I guess you're free to go. Don't kill anyone or else you'll be executed." Enough. That I don't care about that anymore. Importantly, why did you kill Byakuya? Answer me! It's funny that you think Byakuya Nagito's is gonna be executed. For someone like him to get killed? It's only fit that you symbols of hope should use his death as a stepping stone to shine even brighter. That was my only motivation. You're not making any sense! Fine, let's 
start the damn boat already. I'm ready to fucking kill this site. Give it time. There we go. Huh? The fuck? We're not finished with this yet. He's trying to get himself killed. How about you shut up and stop being hostile to every other woman? Not to mention half the guys. You're just a hostile little bitch. Hate you. Um, for now, might I suggest we listen to what she has to say? But we know who the killer is. Simply listening is acceptable. However, I won't allow this to end with mere play. Now then, let us lift the curtain for our bloody spectacle. From this point on, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your actions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they touch these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. Please time your truth bullets just right so they won't get interrupted by the white noise. By the way, if the difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. In that case, all it means is this explanation didn't mean anything at all. It had no meaning whatsoever. Just like my life. Oh, please don't worry, I'm not going to fall into despair. <laughs> Even though it's meaningless, allow me to say one more thing. In this debate, you won't be able to shoot down the white noise. This will be explained later. If you press the start button during the arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. So I can't shoot down the white noise for some reason? Okay, whatever. Doki, Chiaki, Kazuichi, Mikan, Zatopsi, Nekamaru's account. So obviously Nagito. Um, he has already confessed. Um, you know that bastard Nagito is the one who did it. He killed Biakio with a knife. Oh, never mind. Thanks for wasting our time, Skanky Bitch. Then let's prepare to cast our votes. Okay, let's read the autopsy. According to Mikan's autopsy, Biakio sustained several puncture wounds to his chest and abdomen. The wounds were inflicted by a thin, sharp weapon roughly 5 millimeters in diameter. You know, not a knife. The skewer. The killer is so obviously Nagito! Uh, he has already con uh, you know That bastard Nagito has hit your Biakio with a knife in the You got that wrong! That's wrong! He was pierced through the floorboards, actually. Knife might not be the murder weapon. That's what you wanted to say, right, Mikan? What the hell are you talking about? It's obvious the knife was the murder weapon. But based on the entry wounds on Yakuya's body, the actual weapon should be roughly five millimeters in diameter. Five millimeters in diameter? That's like way skinnier than a knife. Hey, that better be true. If you screwed up, I'll sell your fucking ass to a whorehouse. Why y'all gotta be rude to my wife like that? Don't disrespect her. I mean, she's right, so there is no rudeness. Why are you threatening her? Is this what you're trying to say, Mikan? As long as we can't prove that the knife is the murder weapon, we can't assume that I'm the killer. What are you saying? No one else can be the killer. It has to be you. Well, no, there are multiple other people who could be the killer. Hey. Don't blame me. Mikan's the one who said it. I'm sorry. Hey Nagito, are you still hiding something? Uh, hiding? Like during the blackout, did something happen between you and Byakuya that we don't know about? Who knows? After all this, what else? I loved did you Nagi when I first hide? played this, and then I got to this part, and I was like, "How fucking dare you betray my love?" You yeah, demented bastard. I didn't, I didn't get to this point. I literally saw it and I went like, oh, wow, you're enter entertaining. But the more I hang out with you, the more I go like, this is just Nagito. And th not Nagito. This is more just Nike, but like demented Nike. Like Nike, he used to torture animals. Jeez, 
The moment your back's against the wall, you get all silent. You piss me off. What happened during the blackout? Hmm. Use your psychic powers. Look, if you cross your eyes like this, it gives you double vision. Don't get distracted. Our lives are at stake, you know? Huh? Whose life is at stake? Seriously, stake? how long for does it take for you to understand the damn rules? Nobody can see in the dark. No matter how hard you think about it, the truth is beyond your sight. Don't you think that's a pretty clever metaphor? Despite the fact that it came from me? No, that's not it. Not it? What's not it? The truth is beyond our sight? No, that can't be it. There should be some way to find out what happened to the dark. So surprised. You were the one who told me, remember? When everyone was shouting during the blackout. Uh, everyone, calm down. We gotta stay calm in a situation like this. Ah, don't step on my feet. What the hell? What's going on here? This, this is. Turn the damn lights on. I can't eat like this, you know. You guys, where are you? W wasn't the blackout just in the kitchen? Perhaps the breaker overloaded? Hold on a sec. I'll go along the wall and do something about it. So, if I'm understanding correctly, Nagito tried to kill Byakuya, and somebody else stole the kill, which is lucky for him. Because then he's not the killer. I mean, you're assuming Nagito actually intended to murder someone. Eh, I believe that he's a psychopath. No less from the ultimate you try to hide a knife, you try to cause a situation. Yeah, but, mm, you know. You know, I don't know all the details yet. I'm missing things. It's a good thing your ears are awesome because your face, style, figure, and personality totally suck. <laughs> You've cut me deep with your knife of truth. However, after hearing what Byakuya and Nagito said in the dark... What the hell? What's going on here? This, this is... Ow! It almost sounds like... Byakuya fought back against Nagito or something. Well, that's actually what happened. As huh? a sign of respect for Ibuki's talent, I have a small confession to make. I was actually shoved out from under the table by Byakuya. He shoved you out? Just as the blackout occurred, I hurried to duck under the table and grab the knife. But Byakuya, wearing his night vision goggles, caught me and shoved me right out from under the table. That's right. I'm so incompetent that I couldn't even grab the knife. So Byakuya stopped him when he was trying to get the knife, and he got shoved out from under the table before you could even grab it? Well, it sounds plausible, I mean, just from listening to what they both said at the time. What the hell? What's going on here? This is... Ow! I could interpret it like that. No, actually. Now they think about it, it sounds exactly what happened. After getting shoved out from under the table, I was just as confused as you guys. I lost sight of the glowing paint. I didn't even know where the power cord was. Before I realized it, the lights had come back on. Yakuya's body was lying under the table. Well, hold on! Are you saying you're not the killer? From the very beginning, the idea to throw a party, hiding the knife, setting up the blackout, it was all going according to plan. But unfortunately, my plan failed. And all thanks to Yakuya's night vision goggles. What happened after that? Even I don't know. You failed? The then you're not the one who killed Byakuya? Then we're right back to square one! How can that be? We spent all this time talking back and forth! 
you're obviously not back to square one. I'd say you're about halfway, considering you did find out a lot. Yeah, you've discovered many steps. You're literally just missing a couple points to figure out who did it. You can't give up. You need to have hope. Do your best and move forward. Shut up, Nagito. Rising to the challenge again and again is why you guys are the symbols of hope. Is Nagito really not the killer? Is this guy really the Nagito I knew before? No, there's no way I could see that. I just thought I knew him, but this whole time I didn't know anything about this guy. I didn't know his true character, it's as simple as that. But now is not the time for me to dwell on that. We need to find Byakuya's true killer, by any means possible. Because if we don't, we... We will die here. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the intermission. Halfway. Yep. Suspension. Well now. Now then, the class trials reach its climax, but... Okay, here's a question for you. What's this? And to those of you who figured out who it is, how about you try the Guess the Killer Challenge? Whoever fails to guess the right killer will have their save data melt away like butter. But if you guess right, I'll award you with this bill with ten billion dollars. Ten billion? Of course, for those who don't want to know who the killer is, you can just continue on. What are you gonna do? This. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I figured, based on the fact that it was a text box. You're so 